Tom Brown, uh, Senior Vice President. Uh, I work in market development and commercial strategy uh, for LexisNexis Risk Solutions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Cybers 2016, what is it about? Why is it special for you today? Well, it's a great meeting place for financial institutions, uh, suppliers to financial institutions, uh, where you can come and discuss innovative new ideas. And one of the topics that we're keen in discussing is how we can bring banks together uh, to solve some of the greatest problems of our day. Uh, for example, we're talking with banks about how to create a uh, global KYC utility. Uh, and that's something that we're very passionate about. We've been creating uh, ecosystems around the world for decades to help uh, industry solve some of the most difficult problems. Well, the issue you're dealing with is risk solutions, which is quite big nowadays. I mean, uh, introducing blockchain is actually quite a big step for financial institutions. And if you can talk a little bit about inclusion and actually providing at the same time more security for financial systems, that would be great. So we, we've been working with uh, partners in the blockchain and Bitcoin space. Uh, one of the more exciting developments that uh, we've announced this year is a partnership with a company called Elliptic. Mm -hmm. And what we've done there is they're actually unmasked uh, the uh, the Bitcoin and so we're actually combining some of our global uh, heightened risk databases and, and allowing them to expose uh, individuals using Bitcoin uh, that are of especially of, of, of risk to financial institutions mm -hmm. so it's a uh, great example of trying to bring uh, blockchain Bitcoin activity into the mainstream and applying bank grade AML protection uh, to all of the financial activity that flows through that so introducing Bitcoin, especially in developing countries in the third world, it's going to be a big step for people to actually to be uh, to have an access to all this payment system. But uh, what about the security? How can you uh, actually guarantee that uh, risk uh, is going to be low? Well, it, blockchain, uh, and as well as other innovative payment mechanisms, mobile payments is certainly having a, a much bigger impact. Uh, around the world than even blockchain today. Uh, we have partners in that arena. Uh, a good example is a customer of ours, TerraPay, that's launching uh, a mobile payments network in the developing countries. And really the whole uh, objective for anyone engaging in, in the financial system is to know who they're doing business with. It doesn't matter if you're a bank uh, in a traditional market or a, uh, in a payment system. If you know who's accessing your system, access, sending money through your system, you can ensure that you're not dealing with bad actors. Mm -hmm. So it really doesn't matter the technology, it really is, is key to make sure that you know your customer, you conduct appropriate due diligence, uh, and our objective is to make sure that we have information on everyone in a given uh, jurisdiction so you can have appropriate vetting, and that brings about further inclusion and ultimately greater, greater transparency. It seems like most of the, um, I'm not sure about the other global banks, but most of the UK banks are looking at the credit history of every customer in order to actually become uh, their official bank. So what are the other options apart from this, uh, I'm talking about UK now, three main uh, companies which provide credit history and seems like the only option for banks to look at the security and the background of a customer. What other solutions and options could you introduce and uh, in, to the banks um, to have a great check on the customer before um, uh, including him into the database. Sure. Yeah, so traditional credit bureaus are a vital part of the financial economy, uh, but they represent just one source of data. Um, unfortunately, they re represent a truncated view of the population. Uh, by definition, they're the consumers that are banked. Uh, so all those that are not accessing financial services today are excluded. When you're trying to uh, prevent fraud, trying to understand the risk of, uh, from a money laundering perspective, you need to look at the entire population. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do, uh, most notably in the United States, the United Kingdom, is actually fill in all the white space left over by the major credit reporting agencies. And we try to create a full view of the entire population. That allows for ultimately greater uh, inclusion because everyone can be vetted. Uh, we're recently, we've re recently conducted a study uh, showing that many customers are turned away solely because they can't be vetted. Uh, so it could be up to 15% of a bank's customers are being excluded, not because they're not credit worthy, but because they can't be vetted at, from a, uh, a security and uh, anti-money laundering perspective. Mm -hmm. What are the main obstacles uh, in uh, developing a great, valuable and efficient banking system in the developing world? As a global company providing risk management, 
What are the obstacles? What are the challenges you are facing in order to introduce um, a working efficient banking system to the developing third third world countries? Well, I think that it, the, the fundamental aspect of sound banking is having solid information available to assess the risk of all participants in the system. Mm -hmm. And so what we've uh, done for decades is to fill in around uh, traditional information sources. So we have very large alternative data sources in the United States, in the UK. We build global databases mm -hmm. that uh, have information on all the heightened risk individuals uh, around the globe covering 240 countries. And uh, further, we're looking for banks to come together and participate collaboratively uh, in, new, you know, in a new organization to better and more efficiently vet their customers. Not just some customers, but all of their consumer and business customers together. Uh, that's the ultimate uh, challenge. So really it comes down to uh, continuing to build out what we call the risk information ecosystems mm -hmm. in each of the jurisdictions around the world. So uh, would you highlight one of the mm, developing countries which is um, showing its development towards, um, an, uh, towards implying all the latest technologies in banking? Well, I think a great example is in Brazil, where you have uh, some of the largest banks trying to create a completely new class of credit intelligence um, company, trying to, trying to bring about more data. In Brazil, uh, up to half the population is, is unbanked. Again, when you're just looking at the banked population, mm -hmm. it's very difficult to bring the you know, and be more inclusive and bring more into the financial uh, financial sector. So I think it's a very progressive move. We've been involved with working with those banks uh, for the past couple of years, uh, and it's a very exciting uh, example. I think China is going to present uh, additional examples. There's a, uh, a sharp rise in the number of private credit bureaus, uh, and so we've been talking with a lot of providers about how to use our technology. We have our own big data technology technology, proprietary linking technology that we've honed over the years uh, that is appro uh, most appropriate for alternative data, uh, data on individuals that are not in the traditional banking space.